Welcome to another review. This time the iconic Tegeve in classic Sud East orange grey white uh, paint scheme from Joef. And this is the full eight cars plus two locomotives consist as uh, recommended by Joef. To build this train uh, I use Joef starting set HJ2326, that's the DC version, not DCC. This is roughly the box. Obviously the cars are already on the layout and uh, the starting set, set consists of the first two units, the two locomotives and two transition cars and the same thing at the end. Everything in between are separate cars which you have to purchase separately and uh, they are coming in a single car plastic box like this. This model is available on the market for quite some time now um, and I won't do the fully blown in detail review because there are already some very good videos available on YouTube. Uh, one of my favorite ones is from Jim, his channel is also known under the nickname of Hoover Motion. Max Supercar, that's another one where you can see the, this model in action. This is the original consists of the starting set, two locomotives, two transition cars and then the rest of the train goes in between here. Uh, one of the locomotives is powered, one of them is a dummy, both of them are equipped with uh, decoder sockets. However, if you are planning to use your model in digital mode or DCC mode, I highly recommend to go and find the model already fitted factory equipped with the decoders. The reason for this is because these models, these locomotives, are difficult to open and uh, I struggled with mine. I've done it, I installed my decoders, I won't open them again unless I absolutely have to. So starting on the top, the pantographs are actually very nicely done, uh, well detailed and of course spring loaded. Nothing extraordinary but uh, well detailed. There is a uh, panel here in the roof that can be removed so you can see additional electrical components. That's actually very nicely detailed. There's not much to see on the top of the roof line however I wanted to point out on these vents here they are actually very nicely done. Uh, they almost look like uh, see-through, but they are not. That's really nice 3D deep injection molding and the same thing is happening here on some of these uh, ventilation panels here. As you can see there is no cab interior, but you can actually see some of the wiring and and a gearbox. And here's the view on the boogies or the tracks. Uh, from the side view they look actually quite decent. However, if you lift them up a little bit you can see that this is just 2D. Very simple mold. The paint quality unfortunately is slightly spotty and you can see that finishing here over that white line there is a stretch here where that white line is over painting the grey panels and I can see that white line hazing uh, on the edge at the back there is a little bit of an overspray so that's one of the engines the rest of it seems to be okay this is the second locomotive, the dummy, and I'm not sure how well you can see it with the contrast, with the high contrast on the camera, but there's a stretch around here where that white line is significantly narrower and I can almost see like the gray paint um, in, the, in the background. It's definitely underpainted. This is one of the transition cars. You can see here the finishing of that white line here. The rest of the car seems to be okay. This is the exactly same spot but the second transition car and uh, in this case everything seems to be okay. The same transition car, that's the second transition car, uh, the opposite side, 
it's hard to see with a high contrast image from a camera but there's a hazing going on at the bottom of this line there's some overspray and uh, without the direct uh, light and you know with the naked eye I can clearly see uh, that there's uh, some overspraying and here are some additional details which are actually quite nice and uh, I wanted to point it out at something uh, else if you haven't picked this one up yet look at this cavitation here 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 it's another one there is one here and right here and that seems to be consistent again that's a direct light so that's a lot of contrast and let me see if I can move my lamp away and how well you can see this so you can still see that line here and definitely you can see this spot here and uh, the dent here and that seems to be consistent with all the cars except for the locomotives and here are the three uh, additional cars purchased separately you can see that indentation here another one here another one here right there ah, this one is bad so it goes on pretty much every single car looks like this and this is again the transition car on the opposite side you can see it quite deep one here and it goes almost like all the way along this panel there's another line here and uh, anyway every single one of them is like this on both sides the good news is the locomotives are looking much better and uh, as you can see strangely enough There's no structural issues, as I can tell. And the other side, same thing. It's just fine. Okay, so let's talk about the drive and the overall performance. Before we even start talking about that, uh, I think uh, you guys have to see a quick uh, video demonstrating how fast this model is and that will explain a lot of things down the road As you can see this model can move actually quite fast and I have the luxury uh, of running it through my home layout of decent size with about 1200 millimeters radius curves and uh, decent track work but uh, because of that speed I, I assume that's the reason why this model is um, built so well or uh, heavy if you, uh, if you wish. It's actually quite well packed with balance and, and weights and we're going to take a look at it in a second and actually the, the drive and, uh, and the uh, couplers um, are beefed up. So this is the drive unit with the TGV logo and endorsement uh, which is clearly an indication that this is licensed product. The five pole motor is somewhere here centrally located, the entire chassis inside is metal and then uh, two shafts the reason why I'm not going to open this model, as I mentioned earlier, is, is because it's very difficult to uh, to open because of the weight and making sure that this model doesn't disintegrate every time there's a derailment or or incident. There is a heavy duty clip in mechanism uh, right here in the center part at the bottom, and you have to remove the skirts first and then go really deep with the screwdriver, try to wedge a tool between these two walls. And try to pop that back out and it's very difficult because that back wall here is really thin and you have to be very careful when you are opening um, in addition there are some clips along on the side and then the entire thing is pretty much wedged in here into that uh, curve coupler non-standard heavy duty coupler with a screw and uh, bolted to the frame you can see the gears there are definitely beefed up 
the entire drive is actually impressively quiet and quite powerful and th that one locomotive has absolutely no problem of pulling the entire uh, consist of 10 cars. I am however cons uh, a little bit concerned about longevity of this drive. Each drive is equipped with uh, one traction tire, you can see one here and there is one on the opposite side and then the electrical pickup is from all four wheels. You can see the connectors here and the electrical pickups. And the same thing is here on the front. Here's the tire and then the electrical pickups are here. And this is one of the uh, two transition cars included in the starter, star, starter set. This is obviously the transition point between uh, locomotive and the rest of the train, that's the locomotive side. And this is the train side. The socket sticking out and the wires, this is not something that you'll see um, coming straight out of the box. This is my own installation of uh, interior lights and additional speakers. And here's the interface between the cars or the coupling mechanism. And again, please disregard the wiring and the, and the connectors. That's my own invention. Pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> um, so you see that shaft standing right in the middle here in a transition point. And you see the clip, the U-shaped clip, which is this one here from the opposite car. This one will go under the knee right here and it will rest on those kind of this step here. And then this pin will feed into this guide providing close coupling on the curves. So let's take a look inside of one of the transition cars. And there are two pillars inside the car in here, um, kind of pretty much sandwiching the bottom and the top shell together. You can see the two pieces of uh, balance or weights. And once you remove the bottom plate, you have to use a, some type of a tool or a screwdriver and wedge the um, entire frame out pretty much three layers that's the base plate the frame and the interior and uh, as you can see the entire bottom part of the entire car is taken over by the weight and the frame therefore there is very little uh, space left for proper interior detailing so the interior is pretty much uh, more or less symbolic there's also another piece of metal hidden right here so this whole compartment here is filled with metal and that's a piece of just simply glued styrofoam on the top. This is the uh, interior light installation which is not included. So let's apply some scientific tools to our evaluation. Power unit 418, 419 grams. Just uh, for perspective, Rocco. Railjet, this is the, the dummy transition car, and the uh, Acme car is 169. A couple of words about the decoder installations or decoders installation, and some of the modifications I already applied to this model. Um, if you decide to go for the DC set, like I did here, and install the decoders uh, by yourself. You will need two of them. The power unit in my case is equipped with ESO Luxon V4. You can go on ESO site and download the sound file for TGV. Uh, the sound quality is actually very good. And uh, I will add maybe a quick clip at the end of the presentation to present some of the sound features. There's I believe 24 functions all together in that um, programming package. The second unit, the dummy, will require a functional decoder to control the headlights and the end of train lights. And uh, in my case, what I did also is I ran uh, two speakers. I have a one speaker in each unit. And that's the reason why you see four wires uh, coming out of the end of transition points. This train is uh, set up with the two locomotives, push and pull, and so I wanted to have the speakers available in both of the units, and actually once you add some additional cars and you space them more, the effect is actually fantastic. If you have the patience and the skills and you want to do it, I highly recommend to install the second speaker in the second unit. It's almost like a semi-stereophonic uh, effect of hearing that electrical motors and, and uh, air compressors on both ends of the train. 
and then the second set of uh, wires is interior uh, interior lights so everything is controlled from the main decoder from the powered unit through 4 pin so here's my uh, personal conclusion um, this is definitely one of the models that is right on the borderline between expensive toy and, and the model and that's unfortunate because this is the only one model on the market available in this classic first generation orange grey white paint scheme and uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I believe Joef is the only one holding a license for releasing this kind of paint scheme in HO scale yes there are models made by Trix and uh, I believe Mehano as well but none of them is offering the model in the orange original uh, iconic paint scheme the drive performance and the overall performance on the layout on the tracks is very good uh, quiet and smooth and uh, operating very very nice the paint quality is unfortunately borderline acceptable slash spotty the overall execution of injection molded parts well pretty much not acceptable uh, you saw the cavitation of some of the panels uh, there's not much to say about that uh, i have simply no comments and uh, if you are looking for one of these models uh, as you know most likely this is not cheap a purchase either which is actually disappointing and a quick disclaimer at the end uh, the interior lights are not included when you are buying the model Happy model railroading.